Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 1, Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number 13. We're going to be looking at cell requirements. Now this particular focus area is around investigating cell requirements including but not limited to matter, including gases, simple nutrients and ions. Now, this is actually a very big section, and I don't think we're going to be able to cover all of these things. So what we're going to do is just give you a bit of an introduction in this video, and then we'll look at them in a little bit more detail in class. So the important thing is that cells are made of different chemicals. Each of those chemicals is made of individual atoms, and we do see some patterns in the types of atoms that are common in biological systems. Cells are like chemical factories, and they are capable of both synthesizing or constructing uh, chemical substances and also of decomposing or breaking them down. Cells need a range of different chemical elements in order for them to survive, and we can see some of those. In fact, we've encountered some of those already in our study of things like cell membranes. So we know, for example, that cell membranes are made of proteins and also of fats, the bilipid uh, layer that's embedded with different proteins, channel proteins, um, carrier proteins, and proteins that are part of the um, support structures for the cell membrane. We also know water is very important in cells. It's not just important as a uh, solvent in which a lot of substances will dissolve, but it's also a reactant and or a product of a number of very important chemical reactions that occur in cells. Ions, um, both positive and negative ions, are present in the solution in the water. And these are also important in diffusing across semi-permeable membranes. And we have looked at things like sodium ions and potassium ions already in our sodium potassium uh, ion pumps that we looked at in uh, active transport systems. And we've also talked about um, the importance of photosynthesis and respiration and how vital glucose is to each of those processes. And of course, the importance of glucose in producing the energy currency of the cell, which is ATP, and it is in itself uh, quite a complex molecule. So if we're going to try and study these things, we're going to have to start to split them up into slightly smaller groups so we can focus on each of these groups individually. To give you a bit of a sense of what we're looking at here, a little bit of an overview of the human body composition. Um, this is, these are very sort of broad kind of numbers, so um, don't get too worried about them at this stage. Of course, one of the important things is, of course, that a very large proportion of our body is water. Uh, but we do have some very important organic uh, molecules, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And we also have minerals, and, and that's where a lot of our uh, salts, our ions, uh, sit in that small 5% of the human body. So let's have a look at a couple of these groups in a little more detail. So the first thing that we want to look at are the organic molecules. And these are very complex compounds and they're all uh, based on a carbon, um, central carbon atom, which can be linked to um, both other carbon atoms and also to hydrogens and oxygens most often, but nitrogens, phosphates, sulfur, uh, phosphorus, sulfur, and so many other different types of compounds. Um, uh, so many other different types of elements to produce compounds. Um, so some of these important compounds that we've looked at before are carbohydrates. Now, one thing that I guess is important to have a look at here is the difference between the, um, the monomer units or the simple forms and the polymer units or the more complex forms. And each of these key groups of organic uh, molecules does have a simple form and a complex form. So uh, for carbohydrates, the simplest form is that is the simple sugars. And glucose is an example of a simple sugar, a monosaccharide. Uh, the polysaccharides or the large sugars uh, include things like starch, and cellulose, one of these we're very good at digesting, one of them not so much. So starch digestion begins in the mouth and we have enzymes that are associated with the breakdown of starch. Cellulose um, is the fiber in our diets that's so important that it continues to keep things moving through our, um, 
digestive system. Uh, we do have bacteria in our guts that can help to digest the cellulose, but we're not real good at doing that. Cellulose is a very large and complex carbohydrate. But both cellulose and starch break down into very simple glucose units, and glucose is uh, a really important uh, molecule and because of what we've talked about in its role in, in respiration. The second important group are lipids, which are fatty acids, um, long chains of fatty acids. Most lipids are very um, uh, long, and they have two regions to them. Um, a, usually they have a hydro hydrophilic or water-loving region and a hydrophobic uh, or water-fearing region. And we talked about this a little bit when we looked at the structure of the cell membranes and their bilipid layer. So phospholipids one of the important, um, more complex forms of fats. And fats are an important part of our uh, body structures, um, but like everything, the proportions are what's going to be very important in each of these. Uh, the third group are proteins. Carbohydrates and lipids are primarily um, just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, nitrogen is a very important component of amino acids, and, and there are a number of other elements that kind of enter in at this point too. Amino acids are the simple version for proteins. Uh, long chains of amino acids are called polypeptides. The bond that links amino one amino acid to another amino acid is a peptide bond so when you have lots of these you have a polypeptide now the polypeptide is often a long chain of amino acids proteins tend to be referring to um, structures where there is a um, a complex kind of um, three-dimensional um, folding of the protein and it's going to be really important when we look at a subgroup of proteins called enzymes and we'll do that in a later video um, and also as part of um, your first assessment task. So enzymes are a very important subgroup of proteins and we'll look at them in a little bit of detail later but one of the keys to their function is that three-dimensional um, folding up of the polypeptide chains into something that um, changes uh, the, the shape and it also means that those shapes are, are very specific they're very specific to a particular type of chemical reaction they're involved in but they're also very specific in terms of the um, the way they bond to the substrate but that's something for another day the last group are the nucleic acids so DNA and RNA and they're based on nucleotide units. Now, a nucleotide unit consists of a nitrogenous base, which is a little bit like what you see up here, um, as well as a sugar, a ribose or a deoxyribose sugar, and a phosphate group. And we've already seen phosphates are pretty important um, in ATP. They're also an important component of DNA. And in fact, our study of DNA is so uh, critical to biology that it'll get a full section treatment of its own in a, in a module later on uh, this year. So that gives you a quick overview of the different types of organic molecules that we can find in living things. Carbohydrates or sugars, lipids or fats, proteins and nucleic acids. The other important group are the inorganic substances and these basically you can just define these as non-organic. So um, substances that don't rely on a carbon um, skeleton or a carbon, long carbon chains. Uh, and they'll include salts. Um, so uh, some of those salts might be uh, calcium phosphate, for example, uh, calcium phosphate, for example, which may be part of um, some of the harder structures in our um, bodies, like um, teeth or bones. Um, metallic ions, so that could be the uh, calcium in solution, and obviously that's going to bind with more than just phosphate ions to produce those structures that I talked about, um, but also things like sodium ions and potassium ions uh, and iron and so on. Uh, that's probably going to be a three plus actually. Um, and then we have non-metallic ions, so we can have chlorides in there, we can have the phosphate groups that I talked about earlier on. Uh, and so and so on. Lots and lots of different types of ions that are in solution and some of those which come out uh, which won't dissolve in water. Obviously, we, we don't want bones and teeth dissolving in water. Um, so we want them to be um, 
non uh, insoluble and the, to hold their their shape and their rigidity for their purpose water we've already said is a really important um, molecule in our bodies uh, and makes up more than half of, of our body weight and then gases oxygen and carbon dioxide being the two most critical ones um, that we would uh, be looking at for living things remember we've got to, we've got to think about plant cells as well as uh, animal cells, autotrophs and heterotrophs and carbon dioxide is going to be critical for the process of photosynthesis, even as it is a waste product of respiration for, for heterotrophs. So you can see just a little picture there to give you a bit of an idea of some of these key um, chemical components of living things. Uh, we will look at a lot of these in a little bit more detail, especially as we look at some of the different processes that are part of living things. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the really important components of matter that matter to biological systems. Thanks for watching.